It's been billed as the Battle of Britain. Our intrepid reporter Steve Bunce has been on the trail of Enzo Macronelli and David Hay chasing the title of number one cruiserweight in the world. is going to stay with us, but not since the heady days of Ben and Eubank has a single British boxing fight attracted such hype. Up for grabs is the right to be called the world's number one cruiserweight. From Swansea to Miami, Steve has been on the trail of Enzo Macronelli and David Hay as they prepare for this weekend's big showdown. Ultimately, Steve comes down to that first bell ringing, it's me and David A in a ring. You know, it, this is what it's been boiling down to, uh, the undisputed cruiserweight champion of the world. I'm ranked number one, universally recognised as the uh, numero uno in the cruiserweight division. 200 pounds, 14 stone four, 91 kilos, I'm the man. I like my idol, Ollie Field, you know, I want to follow in his footsteps and you know, I can't wait for this fight. I, you know, I can't, I can't really explain how much I want this fight. Once that first bell rings, the gulf between number one and number two is going to be glaringly obvious from the first, first, first jab that I throw. Two men from different worlds. The family guy, the playboy. Old-fashioned man, modern man. But both fighters have the same style. It's power in the ring. The don't blink factor. One in a cold, cramped hut, surrounded by smells and friendly faces. The other in the heat of Miami, surrounded by his own thoughts. A massive fight, Britain's best for 20 years. Four belts, just one winner. You don't really train in modern facilities, do you? No, it's, you know, he said he needs a sun on his back, you know, he likes a warmth. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm in the freezing cold of uh, sunny Wales. Um, <laughs> But obviously, you know, we're in, we're in the gym, we're in the environment. Got to train that a little bit harder to get warm, and uh, you know, that's what I'm used to. But there's no prima donnas in the gym. Obviously, Joe's been uh, taught the tree for a long time in the gym, and you know, Angel has them treat him any differently. And uh, you know, I think that's the best way to be. We've got a lot of fighters in there, up and coming fighters, you know, established fighters, and we do everything together. And uh, the atmosphere in there is, uh, you know, it's electric every every day of the week. You know, we actually enjoy it and the, the atmosphere just brings you on a little bit more. Boxing is the loneliest sport in the world. Once you get in that ring, you're on your own. So you need to get in the mindset before the fight and the lead up. You don't need people around, you don't need your pals around. You saying, oh, you look great, David, that was a great session. At the end of the day, you're there to do a job. You know, Adam's there to get me in the best possible condition. Make sure everything technically is spot on. Do you get lonely, just the two of you together? There's more fun environments. He, he doesn't provide me everything I need. <laughs> I like my own company. I like to be around a high class of people. I understand that, brother. <laughs> That's why I've got my suit on and my best Hawaiian shirt. They said to me, dress up. He only likes to mix with higher class of people. I've watched them a long time. Watched Hay since he was 11. I've seen both in their tunnel of victory. Hay can go solo. He likes his own company. Miami one month, Northern Cyprus the next. Macronelli, he's a homeboy. He likes the family links. It helps him relax. It fires his desire. Something special happens when you go inside that tin shed. Looks like it's going to be blown away and fall off the edge of the cliff there down at the valley. That's a special atmosphere in that gym. Uh, my dad's gym. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, that's where I've been brought up when I didn't get a chance. Uh, I let him go to the gym and uh, help my dad out with uh, the young kids. Um, and, you know, some cracking boys in there. And it's just, it's just another atmosphere that I enjoy being part of. You know, if I can give my knowledge to some kids, you know, it's great. And I'm really nice to week, are you in here? Um, Monday, Wednesday, oh. Friday. Uh, and then on a Sunday, you know, the boys going for the championships. Well done, boys. Well, what, what do they pay? A pound a night? Uh, £3 a week. That's all in charge, £3 a week. Come one night, £3, come three nights, £3. Pound. David's always been lovely to watch as a fluid boxer. I don't mean fight tactics where you're working on something, just like watching him now, he's lovely to watch as a, as a boxer like this. Lovely. Do you keep any of your stuff from when you were younger? Your boots and vests and stuff, what a pity, eh? Old memories. Remember I was doing a clear out, in the bottom of a black bag I found my uh, silver medal from the World Championship. Is that right? Yeah. I don't know, I'm not quite, I'm not sentimental like that. That was just then, that was then, this is now. I'm hoping he's got that.
praised Lunatic on the pads of him, really grafted him, and he's doing hundreds of press. I, I hope all that's happening, so it's going to be a bit of an entertaining fight for the fans, because be, I'd hate for this fight to be over with a first punch. All the showbiz, like you said, means nothing to me. I'm a family man. I love what I do, and, uh, and I'll carry on doing it. Do you know, I was in central London the other week, Dave, I and mean, I get a tap on the shoulder. Got a couple of world dressed guys say, is David Hay training for this big fight? I said, yeah, of course he is. He said, they said, oh. I said, why do you know him? He said, I don't know him, he said, but he nicked my girlfriend. Yeah, it might, might, might have happened, might have happened. No, it might have happened, but I didn't, I didn't catch a name. That's what he said. What, what can you do, huh? What can you do? Huh? What can you do? <laughs> Give him back at the end of it. <laughs> You know me a long time ago, Steve, and uh, you know, it's the fight I've wanted. It's a fight that's been on uh, British public lips for a long time. Like basically since we both turned professional. And as it happens, you couldn't pick a better time for us to finally lock horns. I need him in the ring because I need to knock him out and shut a few people up who uh, think they know about boxing. I think I, I've been given the respect I deserve over the last couple of years, and uh, you know, I've said it before, this is a night I will get my respect. I'm a better human specimen than Enzo Macron is, and that becomes so clear as soon as that bell goes. Evander looking with great interest there at those two, but Steve, just how big is this fight in Britain? Well, we talk about it being as big, if not bigger, than the Ben Eubank fights, which took place in the 90s, 1990, 93. They had the benefit of terrestrial TV, so 17 million viewers. This fight, in many ways, is credibility-wise, this is a bigger fight than that. 20,000 people sold out. These two guys are the best two cruiserweights in the world. They just happen to both be British. But more than that, they've got this incredible punching record. David Hay. He's won 20 times, 19 of his opponents have been smashed, knocked out, unconscious, oxygen, that type of stuff, and he does it well. Enzo's record, slightly, you know, he's a bit of a powder puncher by comparison, Gab. He's only knocked out, I think, 21 of his 26 victims. And here's the thing, they both go down, they both get up. They can both talk, and there's just a degree of nastiness creeping in. That's why I think it will, be, I think it will eclipse the great fights from the 90s. I really do. I think it's got all of the ingredients. Many are saying, that this is the best crop of British boxers uh, since the likes of, of Lennox, Lennox Lewis and these two are just part of that. How do you fancy uh, fighting either one of these two? Me fighting them? Uh, well, you know, even though they move up the heavyweight, I'd rather fight somebody I've already seen, fight before and, and already champion. My whole thing is not to fight them young guys. That's a whole, <laughs> I'd be here all my whole... I will never retire if I had to go back and fight the young guys. He, he was watching David Hay really carefully. He said to me, which one's David Hay? Because David Hay's already fought at the heavyweight, and David's plan after this fight is to take six months off and gain about 28 pounds, Evander. Do you think that's too much for him to gain? Well, I, I do personally, because, because the weight really don't make you a better puncher. And you take it, you know... When you when you take one fight at a time, you will gain the weight, you know, because it's young. So you're going to put weight on automatic. But you fool around, put that weight on, then you're going to get heavy. You're going to get too heavy. We saw there the hype, that the talk between the two of them, building up uh, to the fight at the weekend. You've been involved in so many of those, you know, and we, we consider some of it to be for the press, you know, some of it is just there for the show. How to cope with that, though, is the difference, isn't it? When you get to the fight itself, you've coped with it well in the week, can make all the difference. Give them some advice. Well, when, you're right, you know, you, it's a word game. When a person has confidence, they can say two words and just tear a person up. And, you know, it, but, you know, it's a talking game, and it, and it is about speaking, but it's what do you say that you stick on there and look a person in his eye? Something's wrong.